You are as precious to me as you were to your own mother and father. I swore to them that I would protect you, and I haven't. Empty philosophy and lies are exposed in the final installment of Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight trilogy, perhaps the most comprehensive and satisfying third film in the history of trilogies. I loved this film. The narrative notes that Nolan plays strike chords that resonate through all aspects of the prior films, the characters and the actions. It brings everything full circle in a way I'd only dreamed they could. This film in many ways captures the best of what we could hope for a third and final film in a franchise. A lot of people complain about third films, Return of the King, too many endings, Return of the Jedi, too many Ewoks. But it doesn't hurt that one of Nolan's favorite films is Blade Runner, my personal favorite, and as Batman Begins reflects the same visual tone, The Dark Knight Rises reflects many more of the same themes, the noir styling even some vehicular similarities. In Batman Begins, Bruce chose neither the pacifist road of his father nor the swift justice terrorism of his mentor father figure, Ra's al Ghul. Now he must contend with accusations that his path, cutting that tightrope walk down the center as Batman, has failed. As well as the care and concern of his surrogate father, Alfred, who desperately wishes Bruce would leave his painful past behind and move on. However, the two glaring omissions of truth from Dark Knight corporate and personal that were hidden in that second film are inevitably going to come to light. What are you? I'm Gotham's reckoning. Exodus 20.16 in the Bible says, You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. It's one of the Ten Commandments. And Proverbs 19.5 says, A false witness will not go unpunished. He who breathes out lies will not escape. Bruce and Gordon's cover-up regarding Harvey Dent has built Gotham into a prosperous city, but like the parable of building a house on the sand, this one's foundation is eroding. But he's a hero, a war hero. This is peacetime. The film also reveals how Alfred's hiding and burning of Rachel's letter in The Dark Knight has had horrific consequences for Bruce Wayne. I won't bury you. I've buried enough members of the Wayne family. Be honest, have you ever lied or omitted truth to spare somebody's feelings? Have you ever been deceitful with the best of intentions? Proverbs says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Nolan has tapped into this fundamental truth that anything less than the truth yields inevitable and disastrous consequences and always, always comes to light. The philosophy of Ra's al Ghul comes full circle, resurgent in this film through other characters, and these lies only add a fuel to that fire that rises. It's a tremendous lesson inherent in this narrative. So how do we overcome? We're also introduced to various Gothamites in this story, some who try to help, some who try to hide, and some seeking their own best interest, like Selina Kyle. She wants a clean slate, she wants to change her life, but will do anything to get there instead of doing what's right. There's a storm coming. You sound like you're looking forward to it. I'm adaptable. Ephesians 5 says, Let no one deceive you with empty words. Don't become partners with them. For at one time you were in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children in the light. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Did they kill him? I'm not sure. Huh. Through the threat of Bane, Bruce must confront the philosophy he stood for and question if his terrorist mentor was right after all, or at least in the sense of might making right, that it's inevitable that that will prevail. Colossians 2 says, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. Bruce rejects those philosophies and the film spirals towards a climax that helps this trilogy mimic three important aspects of a true savior. You don't owe these people anymore. You've given them everything. Not everything. Not yet. In Batman Begins, Bruce became a symbol. In Dark Knight, he became the scapegoat. And now in The Dark Knight Rises, he must embody sacrifice. It's not unlike the story of Jesus. Jesus wasn't just a symbol, a good example, a good teacher, as some people would say. The Jewish Day of Atonement in his time was marked by two goats, the scapegoat upon which all the sins of the people were symbolically placed and sent out of the city, and then the other goat sacrificed as an atonement of blood to satisfy justice and grant God's people mercy. 
Jesus gave the people an example, then died on a cross outside the city as both scapegoat and blood atonement. A savior revealed as symbol, scapegoat, and sacrifice. The Son of God. Nolan's trilogy has given us a comic book facsimile of these elements. Though how Bruce sacrifices or embodies that, well, you'll need to see the movie. There's so much more we could talk about with this movie, but we'll have to follow this review up with some written, spoiler-filled content to be able to discuss those themes. So for more on The Dark Knight Rises, be sure to check out Cinemagogue.com. I'm James Harleman, and until next time, remember, watch to glorify.